In North Texas, cattle graze in the shadow of a subdivision. A replica White House sits next to a freeway. And this town center could be right out of a movie set. But the suburban here can look more urban. It's more diverse. And it's put Texas in play in 2020. The people who have been moving from one camp to the other are suburban voters. First suburban women and more recently their husbands. So those have traditionally been Republican voters. They're now in transition. Some of them will go home. Others of them will vote for Biden over Trump. That's where the real movement is. Across the country, under all those suburban rooftops, half of the U.S. population, which means millions of votes. And both parties know it. It's not just the landscape that's changing here in Texas. It's the political map in the suburbs between Dallas and Fort Worth. If Democrats have a lock on California, New York, Illinois, and Texas is coming to competitiveness, let alone purple on the way to blue, very difficult to see how Republicans thrive nationally going forward. Trump destabilizes politics enough that you can, you can see Texas is in play, but it probably wouldn't be if you had a regular Republican candidate for the presidency. Political change in the suburbs is coming with a warning from President Trump. They want to indoctrinate our children, defund our police, abolish the suburbs, incite riots, and leave every city at the mercy of the radical left. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. We will fight all of their lives to get into the suburbs and have a beautiful home. There will be no more low-income housing forced into the suburbs. It's an appeal to educated suburban voters, an appeal for many that doesn't ring true. I don't know what he thinks that we're cloistered behind these gates with our SUVs and our children in our soccer uniforms, just terrified that whoever they are are coming to get us. We don't feel that way. I think that what the president is suggesting is so far from the truth. I don't think anybody, including housewives, are worried about their safety because for the most part, the police and the community work well together. When there was a little bit more looting associated with violence in Dallas, there was some talk, but we've been pretty isolated from that. I don't hear many of my friends talking about that being a risk to us in Texas suburbia. I think a lot of people are resonating with Vice President Biden's stance on inclusivity and making sure that this country really is a place for anyone who wants to come here and, and, and make, make a life for themselves and live out the American dream. In recent decades, the population in Dallas-Fort Worth has exploded. Seven and a half million people, the fastest growing region of the country, that could one day pass Chicago as the nation's third largest metropolitan area. Fueling the boom, the world's busiest airport, jobs at some of America's biggest companies based here, and land, lots of land. Here in the 24th Congressional District, half of the population, now people of color, with growing Asian and Latino communities. You can see it just by looking at the restaurant signs. When I got here, there weren't a lot of um like ethnic restaurants, I want to say. There was not like if I wanted to get good Pakistani or Indian food, it was just like one option. Maham Khan grew up here and has seen the change. When Trump talks about suburbs, I don't think he's picturing our suburb. The typical housewife in this area is like a 60 year old Indian mom who is a nurse she's going to work for 12 hours. She's not staying at home and doing a housewife. Every, my mom works, everyone I know, their parents are working, their kids are going to school. And it's a typical suburb, but it's not white women, you know, that are or white, just white people that are running it. There's pockets, there's so many diverse groups of people that are living here. Khan is volunteering for Democrat Candace Valenzuela a former school board member who could become the first Afro-Latina member of Congress. It's a suburban race with national attention, big money for ads, a true toss-up. The incumbent Republican won here by only three percentage points in 2018. He's not running again. It is tragic how we're being hurt here 
and a lot of the images that Trump is putting on television, uh, trying to scare us into a, a thinking that a Biden pres presidency could hurt us. These are images of his presidency. These are images of his America. And as a suburban woman who also happens to own a house, my sincere fear is that we're not going to get past this unless DC works hard to take care of our most important resource in this country, and that's our people. Valenzuela is campaigning virtually during the pandemic. I value the, the lives and livelihoods of my family. I value the lives and livelihoods of the people of this district. And cramming yourself into a room full of people who don't believe that COVID exists with no masks is not acting like a first responder. If you all were sitting in the position in Congress, what would you be fighting for at this point? Her opponent, Republican Beth Van Dyne, is the former mayor of Irving, Texas, the largest city in the district. She's campaigning in person, like at this gathering of business people at a restaurant where no one wore a mask. Van Dyne said people were drinking, so no masks were needed. I think it's incumbent on us as public servants to get out. We don't have the luxury of dialing it in. We don't have the luxury of just doing everything from our living room. It, it's, you can't get out and be with the public if you're just staying inside your house. It's a strategy borrowed from the president. And Van Dyne is also echoing his law and order message. Why we stand with Beth Van Dyne. When you've got you know, Democrat DAs who are pushing criminals out of prison and into the street and yet not enforcing laws, when you've got you know, discussions of, of defunding the police, I, I don't think it's scared. I think they're concerned, and rightly so. Because if that's what's happening today, what's it going to be like tomorrow? At the Van Dyne campaign headquarters, above a freight terminal near the airport, the look of a typical campaign. Volunteers on phones, stacks of postcards. Beth Van Dyne just represents my values. Um, and so I just support her. Um, I love that she is a huge supporter of our police. Um, I'm a big fan of the fact that she is out in the community every single day. In Colleyville, Texas, which leans conservative, Vanessa Steinkamp says the Republican push to return to normal, despite the risks, could help the party in November. I think in the initial parts of the lockdown, everybody supported it and we supported school closures. But as time drags on, I think a lot of parents see the deleterious effects of school closures. And I'm hearing this undercurrent from a lot of people that might have voted for the Democrat in the primary, but now are very concerned about getting their kids back in school. And I don't think they see it so much as it's a vote for Trump if they were to vote for him. I think they see it as a vote for their kids to be back in school. But for Neil Gunaguntla in Irving, the state director of South Asians for Biden, that rush to reopen may hurt Trump. The pandemic has, has really been an issue that has been close to a lot of us. Um, what we've seen here in our community is we have a lot of physicians um, in the South Asian community here in Irving, a lot of nurses and a lot of healthcare staff in general, and also a lot of essential workers. We've really seen a lot of those um, individuals and their families directly impacted by, by the pandemic. It wasn't even as high as the roof line. George Vitas came in 79. <laughs> Absolutely. From New York City. That's, that's my live oak. There's a certain tranquility here. A vote for Trump may keep it that way. Well, Texas is a state that, that thrives on equality of opportunity and a certain amount of government and no more. Uh, we don't let our, our state government meet more than once every two years and not for that long. So they don't burden us with regulations and laws. And we as citizens, responsible citizens, live our lives accordingly. And everything that's happening to date is good. Why change and take a take a risk on something else? So I'm, you know, I'm obviously going to vote Republican this year. Uh, I, don't, I don't see any reason not to. Angie Hedesheimer hopes 2020 is the year Texas turns blue. Unfortunately, we lost Justice Ginsburg, and who knows what's going to happen on the court. But if we can flip or maintain the House and flip the Senate, and put a Democrat in local offices up and down the ballot, 
then we can change these things. On this night, she's at a Cajun restaurant in the town of Keller, getting people registered to vote. She says she won't stop until Election Day. We are outraged at what has happened to our country. This is not, you know, I'm a stay-at-home mom. I obviously value my family and how I want to raise my children. The world of Donald Trump is not the world I want to raise my children in. A battle in the burbs for this house being waged on Lone Star land.